my name is Tony Haddad. I'm from Lebanon. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Technica International. This is a company in Lebanon who builds automation systems and conveyors for the food and beverage industry. We started as a small workshop. Uh, we started as a uh, small company, small workshop back in 1982. That's the year of invade, invasion of Lebanon by Israel. During the war, we were building the company, and after 30 years now, we are approved vendors to multinational companies like Procter & Gamble, Nestle, Pepsi-Cola, Coca-Cola, and producers companies like this. Okay, so how old were you when you started the company? And I started, you... well, I started, I was at the age of 30, and that was my dream. I yeah. told myself that by the age of 30, I should be working on my own, and that's what happened. On my 30th anniversary, I left employment. I was very well employed with a good salary. I left that during the war, during the invasion, and I started my company. So, so why did you do that? What was it that took oh, you away yeah. from a big successful company <laughs> and, and taking risks? Why, why do it? Well, I had a dream, as a matter of fact. And my dream was that I wanted to build locally in Lebanon equipment that would be able to sell over Europe and the rest of the world. So the dream was that why not build a company that does high-tech equipment that can be sold on a worldwide scale and this is what happened really after 30 years. So that was your plan, your strategy. Did at any point your strategy or plan change? Or the, the overall vision did not change really. What changed are the tactics. You know, we're a country living in a, in a state of war for 30 years and we have to live with the adversities and the uh, surprises that we get every day. So. We had to change the tactics of how we do it, but the overall vision, what we call our BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal did not change really. And uh, this year, as a matter of fact, I started on a uh, plan to start uh, on our 30th anniversary, which is this year, uh, we're starting on a uh, plan to transform Technica into an SFO, strategy focused organization. And that we do it for the purpose of having a succession plan within the next five years. I'm turning the company to the second generation. So in order to do that, we have to have a strategy focused organization where we have a vision, the leadership is aligned into a common goal, and we have strategy mapping and we do our own objectives. So you're talking about the second generation. Are you going to encourage all your children, your family? My family, sure. My family is working with me now. My children, they're candidates to be the next uh, CEOs of the company. We're uh, developing a PDP plan for them, personal development plans, and I think that they will take over in five years. So when you say uh, development plans and skills, I mean, obviously before you worked for a large company or you had training and resources, and suddenly you start out in a smaller company, Yes. did you find that you had all the skills you needed to run a business, or did you have to suddenly learn some things very quickly? Well, you know, I, I am an engineering uh, by degree, I have an engineering degree, but then I went uh, out and studied my MBA, so I have my business background from the MBA. But it's not really the education, it's the passion of the work and it's the vision of doing something on my own. And this is what uh, what's the whole story behind it. Okay. And did you find any problems along the way? Did you make some mistakes and failures that you now went back? And <laughs> so what, what did you learn and what were the biggest areas? Well, the biggest uh, learning I had is that a leader is supposed to take decisions. You cannot lead without taking decisions. Not many of them, uh, not all of them are good decisions, but at least you decide, you check and test your decision, and if it's good, you continue. If not, you change it. But all the time, we're taking decisions. And I've taken a lot of decisions in my life. Yeah. So does it now encourage you to go in and do something else and start another business? Or? I think what would happen is that I'll turn Technica to the second generation. I'll be coaching on the side. I'm not going to be involved in the day to day. But as you know, we cannot stop. I mean, entrepreneurs cannot stop working. Yeah. So even to the last day of my life, I'll be working, except that I'm not going to be working on the day-to-day -day of the business. I probably will be expanding into different areas, new ventures, and something to grow so that we can bring in all the time new blood into the company so that they have a place where they can really build their careers like I did my own. Okay. And when you started, I guess, at the beginning, was finance a problem? How did you finance your business? Yes, when you started, it was a big problem, finance. In 1982, banks would not lend us any money. That was years of war. And as a matter of fact, the capital that I started with is just $15,000. Okay. $15,000 capital, now the company is close to $20 million. Wow. So the money now is not a problem. Now banks come to us and tell us, 
you want to grow, you want money, this is money. So money is not the issue now. The issue is to have a vision and to have really something to uh, a clear goal to work for and uh, to grow it uh, during the years. So if you're advising, uh, say, a friend of yours who was thinking of starting a business, uh -huh. what would be the things that you would tell them to prepare them to, to try and give them the best chance? Okay, I, if to this friend I would say, if you have a dream, drop everything and follow your dream. Follow your passion and do whatever you feel you want to do. If you have confidence in yourself, you have trust in your God and self-confidence, if you're well determined and have the will and the hard work, you put it into your work, you will succeed. The other elements will just fit in. The money, the customers, all this will come in. The basic ingredients is you have to have a dream and the passion to follow your dream. But don't you think a lot of people are held back because they've got the mortgage, they've got the income, they've got the car, the lifestyle, and they fear that the income is going to be a challenge? And well, that's, that's the truth. I left a very good, decent salary. In 1982, my salary was very high. I was one of the well-paid engineers in the country, and I dropped that. And my wife was pregnant, I had a child, I was studying my MBA, and all of a sudden I found myself without a job, starting on a new venture that I don't know the result of. And because I had this vision and this passion put into my work, I was able to make it. So don't, don't be afraid to follow your dream. Thank you very much.